someone say amen. Amen. And can someone say praise God. Praise God. Can someone say hallelujah this morning. Hallelujah. Your body is good. All the time. All the time. All the time. God is good. The reason why I sing that hymn this evening, I uh, want you to stay with that last verse and remember it for the rest of my speaking here this evening. For the old realm of nature mind, that is our present far too small. Because love so amazing so divine. demands my soul, my life, and my heart. Yes. Stay with that verse this evening. I want to give my special regards this evening to God our Father who is in heaven. Yes. Through the sprinkling of the blood and the obedience of Jesus Christ, the sanctifying presence of the Holy Spirit. Present good evening to my beloved brother, Aunt Shepherd and Chief Apostle, King yes. Shepherd. Thank you. Call him Colinda, we call him Davidson, but I want to give God thanks and praise this evening for the whole congregation of God who gathered here this evening praise to hear a word of God. Yes. With a theme like this this evening, vesting in divine vision. I want to give God thanks this evening for the one who exalted us this evening, yes. 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 I want to say us, I want to speak collectively, we yes. started this tonight, Teacher Anne. And just like any other relay race, I pray to God that uh, they who are coming during the week will continue from where we are. Come on now, come yeah. on now. Because in any relay, the first leg is very important. Yes. Yes. So we set the pace tonight regardless of us. And I have preached with you before. Yes. And I want to give God thanks for the way you exalted. You see why I came early tonight? Yes. Simply because if I have walked through those doors, a little too late, I might have repeated things that she said. So it's good thing to come early any place to go. And soak up the atmosphere. Know what's happening. I came early on purpose just to see what's happening. I'm not the kind of preacher to walk through the door late. You can miss a lot of things. And when teacher Anne exhort a church, I could have come in here this evening and said, just like she has said, according to Proverbs 29 and 18, she said it. Where there's no vision, the people perish. I'm privileged to speak after you because they are God's holy words in this evening. Amen. I want to give God thanks for the younger ones this evening who have uh, brought uh, Jeremiah. What is this, this evening? She brought Jeremiah, I think it was 28, 23 and verse 28. Where it was go, to, go and tell the people, go and tell the dream that you have, go and tell the word that you have. And that word touched me this evening. It all has to do with a dream and a vision. And a little young man there this evening, uh, uh, he brought uh, Psalm 89 and verse 19. And it basically speaks about how David was anointed to rule, and he did rule over Israel. Shall I praise the Lord this evening? Shall I praise God for this, this evening? And that uh, little young man, I want to talk about him. I want to get it out of the way before I move on this evening. He's sitting right over here. I saw him last week at a, a 16th birthday anniversary. How you doing, young man? Good. And I'm saying in my heart that uh, if we look at him, I begin to smile last week. I said, this is the closest I will ever come to see an angel. <laughs> God is my witness. That's the only picture I have of him in my mind. And that is what we do as people. Yeah. We create pictures in our mind, a thought, and then we start to go on that. I've never seen an angel, I mean, in the carnal sense of the word, but uh, I look at him and I begin to say in my heart, this is the closest I will ever come to see an angel. Something about him this evening. I want to go back. And I'm going to use him as a springboard or a platform for which I'm going to preach this evening. You know, for that simple reason, God can be misunderstood among us. Because we describe God in human terms. We talk about the eyes of God and the ears of God and the heart of God and the hands of God. It's a big word for that. It's called anthropomorphism. Yes. Don't worry about the word. But just using human terms to describe God, that's the closest we can come to describe who God is. Yes. You got it? Yes. And because of that simple concept, we can mistake God for many reasons. We can bring him down or don't claim at our level because we use human terms to describe Go him. Go ahead. But that's all he gives us to get to understand him. Yes. So we have to be very careful when we talk about vesting in vision divine. And what we're going to use human terms to describe God. Please do not ever think we know all there is to know about him. Yes. All we know about God is what he has revealed unto us. If God did not reveal himself to us, there's no way we could have known him. 
And please do not downplay God because you hear these human terms, the eyes of God and the hands of God. And the... He gave you that because we understand the scriptures in human language. This is the closest we could ever come to understand God's holy words. I do not want you to miss this concept this evening. The Bible is written in a way that we can misunderstand it very easily and we can understand it clearly. Shall I praise the Lord for that? I'm just saying this as a form of introduction. That's why God said according to Jeremiah 3 and 15, I will give you pastors of my own hands and they will feed you with knowledge and with understanding. We all can read the Bible, but you will need teachers sometimes to teach you the yes, deeper truth. Yes. It is, this Bible is not written at the level all of us must understand it. That's why God sent preachers, teachers, apostles, prophets to understand his better self. Shall I praise the Lord for that? You may ask yourself, why church? Why do we come to revival? What is a revival? The word is stamped right on our forward right there. A revival has to do with bringing back something yes. that is dead to life. Yes. Revive. So when you come out here tonight, it's a place where, where, where your conscience can be quickened by the holiness of God. Yes. Your very presence here tonight, uh, your mind can be fed by the word of God. Your very presence here tonight, your imagination can be purged by the beauty of God. Go ahead. Your very presence here this evening tells us that your will can be devoted to the purpose of God. Yes. And that's what you call vested in vision. a vision that is divine. Shall we praise the Lord this evening? Yes. The very presence here this evening, to put it this way, is that our hearts can be opened to the love of God. Yes. And I wouldn't go on to explain or the, 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 the definition she gave for vesting and for vision and for divine. Doing that is like repeating myself. Yes. But the word vesting, like she said, is like you're walking with a company, and if the company begins to prosper automatically, your benefits go up. Amen. But if the company begins to, to, to fall, your, your, something's going to happen yes. with your benefits. Yes. So you must know and understand these things. Because we are in Christ, we are vested in Christ. Shall I praise the Lord for that? Yes. That is what it means to be in Christ. We have the knowledge that God it's for us. And all that we do is good for us. According to Ephesians 2 and 10. That is what it means, vesting. Shall I praise the Lord? Praise we the Lord. have that present that, that, that God is for us all through. And everything that he does. And if you take your time and look at the book of Ephesians, you will see that it is divided neatly into two sections. Take your time this evening and you will see it next time. Yes. Look at the book of Ephesians. And you see the first half shows the blessings that we, be, we receive as believers. And the second half of Ephesians tells us that what God expects from us because we are believers, because he blessed us. So all through the spiritual life, you have to continue to vest in God. I pray there, God, that you see all your vesting and your investment, you see it through a spiritual aspect this evening. Yeah. The problem is that what we do, we begin to look at things from a human standpoint. And all we see is just what we condition to see. Shall I praise the Lord this evening? Yeah. You know, by the time you leave here this evening, I want you to bear in mind. I pray that God, before you leave this evening, you re-examine your commitment to God. Yes. Before you leave this evening, I pray that God that you re-identify area of responsibilities and the resources necessary for making and keeping those commandments, yes. those commitments. I pray that God, before you leave here this evening, you utilize those resources for making and fulfilling those commitments to God. Yeah. I pray that God, that you take these things seriously. Yeah. You know, it is a comfortable thing, that's why I say it, and I ask you to say to me, that God is good all the time. Yes. And all the time, yes. God is good. Yes. So easy to say. But don't feel bad that I have to search myself to know that. It is the service for many of us sometimes. Oh, no. yes. God is good. He's naturally good. Yes. There's nothing you can do to change the goodness of God. Oh, Shall we praise the Lord for that? Yes. It is a comfortable thing to sit in a, in a comfortable church, a saving environment, and say, oh, God is good. But none of us cannot really imagine the, the goodness of God yes. and the love of God. What do we do from time to time, beginning with my own self? We, we, we create a picture in our mind and we say, this is it. Wow, the love of God is like this. 
but it's far from what the love of God is. If you want to be partakers of this divine vision for God, you have to, with all tenderness and wholeheartedness, be ready to yield yourself to be led by the sanctifying presence of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And then you will know what the goodness of God is. Yeah. For many of us, it's just another thought. Mm -hmm. But none of us can stop God from being who he is. He is naturally good. Yeah. Yeah. Shall we praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. And for you to understand a divine vision, like I said, you must see Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, in all that you do. Yes. If you want to understand, understand what is a, a divine vision, yeah. you must see God all through. Everything that you do. Hallelujah. I'm standing here this evening very, very, very weak in a sense. All that I have is a zeal for God. Yes. Amen. A desire to preach yes. His word. Yes. A whole fashioned Bible. Yes. Yes. And a, a, a congregation who wants to hear God's holy word. Yes. I have a name for that kind of mindset. Yes. I, I, call yes. It, yes. I call it the water gun theology. Take your time. Take your time. You know what is a water gun? He, has less power to kill anyone. It's not yeah, that is what I have. The Bible is so fast. I do not care about it. But don't, don't miss this. Just the concept that I'm shooting back. Yeah. What will it say? Not to kill nobody. Take it time. Oh, God, go on. Take it time. The weapon is not exactly in the bullet itself. It's just the thought at least, yes. oh my God, he's yes. shooting back. Yes. He's shooting back. Yes. He's shooting back. Because he has the word of God. Yes. He's weak and he's poor. Yes. It's an old fashioned Bible. Yes. So sometimes all the artillery is out there. Yes. All the technology and all the different things. Yes. That you don't care too much about this holy Bible. Oh, I call it, like I said, the water gun theology. Oh, and the concept is not in the weapon, the gun. No. It's the thought. Oh my God, the dirty shooting back. Yes. <laughs> water bullets. <laughs> The old fashioned Bible. Yeah, but we ask to come back to it yeah. someday. Yeah. Shall we praise the Lord for that? Yeah. And like I said, too many of us look at biblical truth from the human standpoint. We look at it from a carnal perspective. Why? Because we are bound. I pray that God you open your minds and you don't miss the essence of the divine vision that God has for us. Yes. And for you to see that vision, you must see God through a spectrum, a linear spectrum. Yes. And I say linear like a line from point A to, to point B. B. Yes. You must see that concept of God. Mm -hmm. In Genesis 2 and verse 7, and the Lord God formed man from the dust yes. of the ground. Yes. And man became yes. a living soul. You must see that there is a beginning. Where the vision starts right there. Yes. And there must be an ending. Yes. You will see right there in Revelation 21 mm -hmm. and verse 12, you will see John saw a city. The only city descending from heaven, from God. You must see this vision this evening. If you don't see a vision with Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, and all that you do, you can miss Christ. Because visions are of God. Yes. We are a Christian people, and we ought to know and understand that visions are of God. Ah. Right there in the beginning, God had a plan for us. Yes. Right there in the beginning, according to Genesis, I repeat it. I had to commit that to memory. It is one of the most powerful revelations I have received lately. Genesis 2 and verse 7. And the Lord God formed this evening. Yeah. When he formed, that was credibility. Oh. Shall we praise the Lord this evening? Oh. And the Lord God spoke, that was capability. Yes. Shall we praise the Lord this evening? Yes. And when he breathed, that was prosperity. Hallelujah. And man became, that was productivity. Yes. It is a powerful verse this evening. Yes. So all we have to do this evening is to change our I may yes. to our I can. Yes. Then I will. Yes. And I must. Yes. Because right there God had a vision for us this evening. He did four things. Yes. That's how me and you came into being yes. this evening. Yes. And the Lord God is his post. Yes. That was credibility. Yes. He formed that was capability this evening. Hallelujah. Oh, he breathed. That was prosperity. Hallelujah. And man became. That was productivity. Yes. So right there, God has a vision for us this yes. evening. Yes. So you ought not to see yourself as you are now, as flesh and blood. The time is coming when you will be transformed into a holy city. Yes. That John had son, that which he saw was a vision. The holy city that was like a revelation. It was descending from heaven from God. That was like an adoption. We became family of God. Yes. Amen. Like a bride adorned for her husband. That was unification. Go ahead. You ought to see that long spectrum this evening. 
There was an original creation according to Genesis. Yeah. And there is a new creation according to Revelation 21, the Holy Hallelujah. City. But that's where we caught up collectively. Yeah. According to according to Corinthians 2 and 5 and verse 17. Mm -hmm. We are all new creatures in Christ this yes. evening. Shall I praise the Lord for that? Yes. Because God has done a new thing. Yes. So we are caught up right now in that spectrum moving towards what you call the new Jerusalem. Yes. But what you have to do is to continue to, to vest on your vision this evening. Yes. It's a difference between renewal and revival and awakening. You see, renewal has to do with you, the individual person, yes. that changed your life, you decided to be born again. Yes. That's, in, that's what you call renewal. Uh -huh. A revival has to do with the whole church this evening. Yes. Shall I praise the Lord for that? Yes. 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 Even when I say the whole church, sometimes it is so much that it will spill out and spill over. Yes. Because when Jesus commanded the disciples to go back and wait for him, yes. they could not have had it. That building could not have contained oh. yes. the Holy Spirit. Ah. It's spilled over. Yes. Shall I praise the Lord for that? And that's where the church comes in when we begin to talk about what you call revival. And awakening is when this church starts to impact the whole community. People begin to come from all sorts and conditions. I've seen what has been happening out there in the holy heart of God. Anywhere there is preaching, there ought to be some healing. It's yes. written here in the book of Acts. Take your yes. time and you will see it. Yes. There ought to be some healing anywhere in the world. God has been preached. Shall I praise the Lord for that this evening? So I pray to God that you look at that vision and continue to move on in Jesus' almighty name. I want to tell you a nice little story. It's an illustration. Of, I did, a, I did a, a, a pastoral course with a, with a woman, with a girl from Korea. Her name was Shing Wong. Someone say Shing Wong. Shing Wong. You're, you're speaking Korean. <laughs> So we sit in the class and we want to impress the professor because he's going to grade us. Yes. Evening, don't miss this. And she said to us, she's like from Korea. She said, when two Japanese meet, they open a bank business. And when two Chinese meet, they open a restaurant. But she said, when two Korean meet, they open a church. The professor looked at her and, and she went on again. She said, when two Vietnamese meet, they may plan a war. And when two Cambodians meet, they may worry where their meal is coming from. But she said, when two Koreans meet, they open a church. And I said, that was very good. Jing Wong. Someone say Jing Wong. Then she said, Brother Derek, where are you from? I said, I'm from the West Indies. What are you doing in me? I said, let's plan the next party. She had a good laugh, I'm so honest with her, I wasn't lying. <laughs> when two West Indian meet, what they do? <laughs> but I want to show you how this word of God can move across culturally. Yes. How this word of God can be understood in different cultures. Yes. But she said that when two Koreans meet, they open a church to impress the professor. Yes. She's no Japanese, she's no Chinese. And I respected her for that. Shall we praise the Lord this evening? Yes. I pray to God that you, you move on in Jesus' almighty name. Yes. And go into this holy Bible of God for things that you don't know. Yes. And then you can understand the divine truth of God. Yes. Some of us have a, what you call a king lion mentality towards the holy Bible. Hallelujah. Oh, just show me where the Philip has and I will make a suit. Don't show me the man. You got to go into the Bible and find Jesus. Do yes. not approach the Bible with a king lion mentality. She don't show me the man, just show me the fellow. I will make a suit. That is tailor, that is not. Let me tell you that you lie of mentality. Approach to the scriptures. And it doesn't work from that. You have to go in the Bible and see the man Christ Jesus. And then you will be able to talk and fit him. This is not in the Bible. Of course. And don't worry, I'll be there. I'm going to be there. I'm going to praise the Lord this evening. I want you. No, I'm very honest with you. I want you to understand these things about God and what he stands for. And like I said, it's only one Bible. It's only one author. It's only one message. And it's about the man Christ Jesus for the salvation of our souls. Shall we praise the Lord for that this evening? I want to give God thanks and praise all of us this evening. Continue to hold on to Jesus. He has a plan for you. But you must, like I said, you must only see him through the vision that he has for you. 
I want to read one verse, apart from those two that I've heard this evening. Acts 16, verses 9 to 10. It's very familiar to us. And I'm saying this to say that uh, we can begin to go our own way if we don't understand the power of the Holy Spirit. Acts 16, verses 9 to 10. I will wait until you find it, and I will show you the reason why I read it. I want you to know sometimes the Holy Spirit can stop you from doing things. Acts 16, verses 9 to 10. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. He stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, someone said after he had seen the vision, after he had seen the vision immediately, here it is, we endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. Shall I praise the Lord for that? A vision appeared unto Paul. Yes. And after he had seen the vision, we, someone said, we, we decided to go into Macedonia. Yes. How will you know who was to read this evening uh, if you don't read the Bible? Yes. That was Luke because Luke wrote the book of Acts. Yes. And Luke was with Paul on some of his missionary journey. Yes, truly. You pay attention to these little words or else you can miss a message yes. this evening. Yes. Paul received the vision. Yes. And then Luke said, we decided to go over there yes. and help them. Oh, the word help give us a word of need. We need each other as a yes. Christian family. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. That word help means simple that they don't kind of do it for themselves. No. Or they're not calling you or burdening you to do it alone. No. But come over here and Wonderful. help us. Yes. That's the key word this evening with vision. Yes. And if you read before those two verses, you will see that Paul had wanted to go to a certain place. And the Holy Spirit stopped him. No, don't go there. Yes. And he had wanted to go to another place. The Spirit stopped him again. No, don't go there and yes. preach. Sometimes the Spirit can say no. Yes. no yes. Sometimes he says yes. yes. Sometimes he says please wait. Yes. Sometimes he says not now. Not now. No. Don't worry, oh, the Spirit tell me, the Spirit tell me. Sometimes it's lying. Yes. And I always say it's L-I-E. Yes. Like Long Island Expressway. <laughs> you have to be careful. Yes. The Holy Spirit can say yes. Oh. You want to do something good. But you have to wait. Yes. Paul wants to go and preach, and Lord, and behold, he had a good intent to go over there. Yes. But yet still the Holy Spirit said, him, no. Yes. But Lord, and behold, when he was at another place, then the Spirit came to him by night. Yes. And he heard a voice in Macedonia say, come over here yes. and help us. Yes. Why am I saying that? You have to wait for the opportune time. Yes. And let the Spirit lead you. Yes. To places this evening. Yeah. Shall I praise the Lord this evening? Yeah. And lo and behold, Paul, he went over there and he did help the Macedonian this evening. Yes. Shall I praise God this evening? Praise God. Uh, you know, you have to be careful with what you do on the road with this mission. Yes. Many of us will fully do things and we say, ah, oh, I didn't mean to do it. Don't lie again. <laughs> you did it. Mm -hmm. You have a will. Yes. And you fully did it. Yeah. So you willfully did it. Uh, so be careful <laughs> using that word. Uh, 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 sorry. No, no, I don't buy all the sorries in these things. If I want to buy all the sorries, I go to the Indian and bear sorry. <laughs> you have to be careful when they tell us, oh, sorry, I didn't need to do it. They have a will and they fully did it. Yes. Shall I praise the Lord for all that? Yes. You have to be careful with all these things. Yes. Very, very, very easily we can miss this divine vision. Since you hear the word divine, it is of God. Amen. That's why I sing that hymn with a passion this evening. Yes. If all the whole realm and all the world was mine, yes. that was a present far too small. Yes. Love. Far too small. Because love is so amazing. God divine. It demands, it demands yes. my soul, my yes. life, my Lord. My Lord. Yes. You have to go all the way with the things yes. of God. He has a plan for all of us this yes. evening. But the problem is that we pay too much attention to the big things of life and we overlook the small, mini things in life. You're going to miss the vision that God has for you if you only pay attention to the big things of life. 
And I know this from the story of Jonah. All we see is what we condition to see this big way. Yeah. Oh, that is impossible. And you know in your heart that with God all things are All we see is the big way in the beginning of the story. But slow down, take your time. At the end of the story, there's a worm. Yes. 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 Oh. That bear is not a hero of Jonah's story, no. that little worm. Yes. At the end of the story, yes. God is going to teach him a lesson. Yes. I will provide a shade for you. I will send a raging storm on the sun to scorch you. Yes. I will send a little worm to destroy your shade. Yes. So all we see is, is the big whale and say it's impossible. It's impossible. And we miss the more meaningful context of the story, the worm yes. at the end. And how, how, how meaningful it can be. Yes. Many of us have a worm in our lives like Jonah. And we paid no mind. Yeah. But I pray to God that you break. Come down, God. That is where God wants you. Come on up, That is where God wants you. If you want to know your vision, you have to be like a Joseph sometimes. Yes. Joseph in the book of Genesis had to come from a pit. Yes. He learned humiliation. Yes. Yes. Then he moved into the prison. He learned organization. Yes. And then he moved to the palaces where he learned administration. Yes. Yes. I pray to God you have a Joseph and it's in your heart. God wants us this evening. Yes. Even David moved from the pastures yes. to the palaces. Yes. I pray that God that you open your hearts yes. and break. Mm. Come down a little. Yes. Come down from your high seats. Yes. And God will do what he has to do. Yes, truly. He has a vision for you from the beginning. You have to understand one thing. And like I always say, we can miss God. Yes. He created us to his own image and likeness. This man has a plan for us. The image and likeness of God has not been lost. No. Don't miss this. But due to sin and corruption and all kind of man of things in the world, the image of God and likeness of God has been distorted. It has been defiled. It has been defaced. But you must go back to the original God as he was. Everything that he made is good, is good, is good, is still good. We humans, he gave us dominion over these things. To live like God when he made us, he made kings and queens to enjoy the palaces of this world. Mm. But what we did, we treated like a, like a den of thieves and prisoners. But God is still God, he is good, yes. he is good, he is God. We are the ones that has to come back to yes. him. Don't feel bad with what I say. I learned yes. how to search my own self. Yes. All of us walk with a little fracture. Yes. All of us walk with a limb because yes. we are feeling. Damaged by sin. We have been ruled by sin. And if we do not understand our sinful con condition, yes. we will never know our will that God has for us oh. to move on in that prepared place that is called the new Jerusalem. Yes. Shall we praise the Lord for that? Yes. I pray that God that you recognize who you are yes. in Christ. Yes. It's very important that you know who you are yes. in Christ. Hallelujah. And through the Bible, you will see a whole lot of people that have visions. Abraham had a vision to move from all of Chaldeans and move to another place. But God will give it to him. Until today, even though Abraham is dead and buried, he's still looking for that city. According to the book of Hebrews, a city that is made without hands. He's still looking. And that place is called the new Jerusalem. You have to improve on your life. And God promised that he will, what you call, see you through. There are many, many visions in this Bible. Many, 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 Zacharias, before John the Baptist was born, he even Joseph, the father of Jesus, they all had visions. Yes. Even Pilate's wife leave that man, Christ Jesus, yes. alone. Yes. Even Cornelius had a vision of Gentile, yes. praying, and God sent him to call Peter, Simon yes. Peter. Shall I praise the Lord for that? Yes. There are many, 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 many visions in this Bible. Yes. And I pray that God that you recognize who you are in Christ. Yes. Yes. How will you know who you are in Christ? You must make Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, the centrality in your life. Yes. Yes. The cross must be central in your life. Yes. In all that you do and say, the cross must be central in your life. And when I say the cross must be central in your life, you must understand the cross, what it stands for, and what it represents. Otherwise, you can't know your vision that God has for you. Before this cross of Christ, 
There was only one man could have looked at that cross and said, you see that? That cross was for me. And that was Barabbas. Yeah. But after that cross, after the crucifixion, all of us can look back to that cross and say, you see that? He did it for me. Yeah. Yeah. But before that cross, only one man could have said, he did it for me. And that was Barabbas. Yeah. But after the cross of Jesus Christ, all of us can look back to that cross and say, you see? He did it for us. You have to make the cross central in your life. Right in the middle there was a savior. On one side was a sinner. And on the other side, there was a saint. But if you do not make the cross of Jesus Christ the central part of your life, yes. you will miss the divine vision that Jesus oh. Christ, the Son of your living God, yes. has for you. Oh. I pray, dear God, that you know according to Proverbs 18 and verse 16 that your, your gift will make room for you. Oh. Yes. When I say your gift will make room for you, it will put you among people that you don't believe you can stand there. Yes. Yes. Because God has a divine plan for you. Yes. And I pray, dear God, that you press on yes. in Jesus' almighty name. Yes. As Christians, a confident stand is what we have. Yes. As Christians, compassionate service is what we do. Yes. As Christians, scare, careful speech is what we say. Oh. As Christians, contrite submission is what we feel. Yes. As Christians, concern sharing is what we give. Shall we praise the Lord this evening? Yes. I want to give God thanks for each and every one this evening. God wants to do a thing. Yes. But you must understand what a godly vision is. Yes. It has characteristics. Oh. And she said it all like I said. I don't want to repeat my heart from her this evening. No. But you must know where to draw the line from what is secular. Yes. Secular of the world. The same yes. things, and what is sacred and spiritual. The things yes. of God. Yes. But you must know where to make them mingle and join as one. Yes. Shall I praise the Lord for that? Yes. People are saying that you have to separate the church from the state. Sometimes the church and the state has to come together. Yes. Because according to the, to the Great Commission in Matthew 28, go out there and make disciples of all people. Yes. Acts 1, 8 tells you, all power has been given unto me. Yes. Go out there, beginning here in Jerusalem, some married Jew and other part of the world. Oh. Sometimes the church and the state has to come together. If it doesn't, you're defeating Jesus' commission. Oh, yes, yes. Where are you about to make these people like Christ? In between the world. Yes. And that is our calling this evening. Yes. But they tell you these things because they want to, 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 to break you, yes. to make you one of them. I pray to God that you understand your calling this evening and who you are in Jesus Christ this evening. Yes. There are some characteristics of, of, of godly vision. First, the vision leads to helping others. Mm. Secondly, a vision ought to glorify God. Yes. Tell the world leader Derek said that to you. Of course. Third, a vision should be focused on the future. Mm. A vision should defeat the devil. Yes. A divine vision should advance what you call God's kingdom. Yes. But how will we know if it's a divine vision? How will we know what we're investing in it if we do not know it? Yes. Like I said, you have to go back to the word of God yes. to find what he wants you to do. That's why Paul cried out on the Damascus road. Who are you, Lord? Mm. Yes. And what do you want me to do? To do? Yes. Someone said that. Who are you, Lord? Who are you, Lord? And what do you want me to do? The Bible never tells us how Paul knew that was the Lord. No. But divine revelation yes. can reveal all things yes. unto man. Yes. Say, man. Yes. Paul, he was going to kill Christians with a band of other Italians. And only Paul saw that vision. On bending knees, yes. he has to crawl up the mountain to say, who are you, Lord? Yes. And what do you want me to do? Yes. If you do not understand the Paul in the book of Acts, you can never know the Paul in the epistles. Be careful, just run to it and don't know Paul in the book of Acts. Yes. You must know him then for you to understand him in the epistles that he wrote. Yes. Who are you, Lord? And what do you want me to do? That is the cry for every Christian yes. who wants to walk in the footsteps of God and know their vision this evening. Yes. You must first discover the vision. You have to discover the vision and know what it is. Then you begin to build on that vision, my yes. beloved sister. Then you begin to communicate the vision, yes. like my beloved King Shepherd is doing. That is one of the key tasks in communicating a vision. 
You know, you, you appear to ways in which you can do the things. You, you're promoting things continually. And that is the way you're going to make that vision being communicated to other places. Yes. Your pilgrimage, your revival and bringing, these are the things that you're going to communicate your vision with. Then you have to develop a strategy for the vision. Yeah. Then you have to know how to implement the vision. Yeah. Shall I praise the Lord this evening? Yes. That is what the spiritual life is all about. And how are you going to do these things? Huh? The responsibility of implementing vision demands a lot of things, my Christian yes. family. Yes. How are you going to how are you going to implement these visions when you know what is it? It's a lot of work you have to do. It demands patience and persistence. Mm. I say sometimes I don't know how this man do these things, <laughs> and I know definitely it's the spirit of God in him yes. this evening. Yes. I came this evening and I saw all of you in red. Uh, I know what is it because my wife has a dress like that at home. <laughs> And I know uh, I'm an honorary member of this church. I'm a member of this church. Yes. So I praise the Lord for that. Yes. And I want to give God thanks and praise for these things this evening. You must know your vision this evening. Yes. A vision, a vision demands participation. Different things you are called to do, different groups. You take care of that. Yes. The vision doesn't come overnight and just no. drop into your lap like that. It takes perspiration. Oh, wipe it, wipe it. Still working for the Lord. Take your time. All these things a vision take. It demands publication. Let the world hear. He knows, it. He knows next year what is planned for you all this year. Yes. And that is what you call a vision. From yes. the past to the present. And you move on. That is what a vision is all about. Yes. But because it has that context of divinity in it, it has to do with God. Yes. Do not go and say, oh, spirit, tell me. <laughs> you know, I don't want to say some things because it might sound contrary, but you can't it again yes. when you make the sign of the cross. I am not going to challenge how you do it, but think when you're doing it again. Yes. The sign of the cross is called the Blessed Trinity. Yes. Yes. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Yes. That's all. And when we make it, we touch four places. I don't want to go there. <laughs> Father, Son, Holy, and we, 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 we left me only by itself. <laughs> <laughs> and we turn to the right, invite the Archivist. Archivist Spirit. Holy Spirit goes, go change them. No. <laughs> we go four places. And the, whole, the, the sign of the cross is the blessed. Trinity, you ought to go three places. Yes. Yes. Father, the Son, Son, and Holy Spirit. Spirit. Don't try it in You're the go in, Father, and you're dropping Holy by yourself. <laughs> spirit by yourself. You're inviting all kind of spirit there. Yes. That's why, give some respect to the Roman Catholic. You look at the priest when he's doing it. He just said, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. He's not, he not going on his body. No. That's the name of God, the Father. Watch him there. Smart. Not only smart, he is exegetically correct according to the Bible. Yes. He's theologically right according yes. to the Bible. So think again how you're gonna how you're gonna cross the body. I pray dear God that you know if you don't know these things, you can be caught up and doing the wrong thing. Yes. Look at him next time. This man messing with me in Latin. Be careful how you do it. Be careful. I repeat, you must know what God calling for you. Yes. But you must know who Jesus Christ he is. is. And you must know who you are in Christ. Yes. If you are the head or the tail, you must know who you are yes. in Christ. You are the body of Christ. But you must know where you function yes. in Christ. Amen. You must know all that he stands for. Yes. And I pray dear God that you understand these things. We are living in some what you call some perilous times. We divide this Holy Bible in what you call the Old Testament and the New Testament. But you can divide it into two, two smaller sections. I have said it before. The first three chapters from Genesis 1 to Genesis 3, you can call that before sin, before the fall. Just like six or seven pages in the Bible was before sin. All the rest of the Bible is called after sin. The whole Bible. Look at it. Genesis 1, Genesis 2, and then chapter 3 came the fall. 
So before chapter 3, just two chapters, is, I call it before sin. Where God used to walk with the Son of Man in the cool of the day at an appointed time. And walk and talk and tell me vision that I have for you. Before sin. But after sin, the whole Bible, 97% of the Bible, see you what a preacher says, is about sin. You ever look at it? From Genesis 4, right down until you meet Revelation, where Jesus is going to bring back this holy city. Shall we praise the Lord for this evening? Yes, yes. But you must know where you are within those lines. Yes. You must see your vision from a spectrum. Yes. From the beginning in Genesis to the end in Revelation. Uh. But we miss the essence of these things. Read Genesis 3 and verse 15, you will see the head of the serpent right here. Mm. Then Jesus will crush the serpent yes. head. Right in Genesis. Yes. Read Revelation and you will see when Satan, the, the dragon, came down and yeah. kicked yeah. and brought one to all of the angels with him. Mm. So if the head is in Genesis mm. and the tail is in Revelation, yes. where is the body? Yes. Yes. Through the pages of this. Holy Bible. Don't have to call it Holy Bible. Don't have to call it a Holy Bible. Otherwise, we would have been mixed up. With this holy Bible, you say, I see no holiness here. Yeah. And I repeat, we see God because God gives us words to describe Him. Yes. The hands of God, the feet of And then we start to fit ourselves with, I can be God too. We call God their hands. Beside that. Yeah. You that word? Beside that. <laughs> Where can you say that God has hands? But you must understand, you must understand the theology that they're talking about. Yeah. Is the best that we have to go on with to describe yes. God yes. in our human language. Yes. So He gives us human terms. Yes. But yes. tell the world there's no such thing as the hands of God and the eyes of God yes. from a carnal perspective, no. from a human standpoint. No. But that's the best that we have to describe Him. Yes. But very often we begin to play that we are like God's. Hey, you get hands like me. Oh, you got feet like me. And we miss the essence yes. of the Almighty God. Yes. We only know him as much as he revealed himself to us. And as he revealed himself to us, he so that we can come to him this evening. Yes. I ask you this evening, what is stopping us from coming to Jesus this evening? Uh. What is stopping us from coming to Jesus this evening? Uh. I want to tell you, I have a lot of stories. Oh God, my story is so long. Oh God, I pray that God is the only one preacher to have this evening. <laughs> oh God, I'm going to rush on my time. But I want to give a nice story to walk with about a farmer who had an event in the forest. I had to apply the story to myself. Yes. You know, these stories, they have a lot of morals behind them. Yes. He went into the forest and he saw an evil egg. Don't miss this. He took it home between his chicken and, and went for an arch. Oh. All the chicken and evil between them. The evil started to do everything that the chicken had do. Yes. Jumping into the mud and the dirt looking for worms, you know, like saying, say, for me, go dig up anything in the shadow. Yes. And from Guyana, supposed to know them things. Yes. Do a little hope you don't bury anything not too deep. The same says, how dig it up. Yes. <laughs> so all this life, this evil, yes. conducting himself like he's a chicken. Yes. Grow his own life. Like a chicken. Yeah. Begging for some food from the masters like a chicken. And any time his neck could have cut like a chicken. <laughs> he lives and grow home. It's a nice story for you to know. Yeah. All the eagle was doing is just what he was conditioned to do from God. Yes. And when he got all that in one day, one, the other chicken he went outside and when he looked up, uh, eagles asking the chicken, what's that? <laughs> You like the story? Yeah. That's an evil one of you. <laughs> that is where you belong. The skies spread your wings and fly. Yes. And all he could have done, he lived and died like a chicken. chicken. Anytime his neck could have cut off. Oh. He didn't know God's vision for him. He got lose the vision. Yes. If we continue to do just what we are continuing to do, we lose our vision if we see ourselves the way we see ourselves. I said that to say that not those of you here are chicken, not even me. We are all eagles. Yeah. I'll tell you today, some feathers are too bright. Some birds are not meant to be caged because no, the feathers right. are too bright. Yeah, right. They belong to the skies. Yeah. 